Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today is going to be a follow-up video from what we produced yesterday, if you watched it before, on how to produce a brilliant 20 mark A star standard level four essay using the structure I used in the last video. And today we're going to put that into practice, giving you an example of an essay I have written before that got about 18, 19 out of 20 full high level four band using the structure I gave. Now the one that we're going to be using today was for the contemporary urban environments, paper two, section C, the optional one, but this will work for any of the sections you did, any optional ones if you've not studied urban, that's fine, you don't need to. This is going to work with any of them. So we'll start today, quick one. If you've already read what I'm about to give you, this is the introduction of yesterday's video, it'll only be two, three minutes, just skip on ahead and I'll see you there. For those of you who haven't, here is a brief intro. So this is how you would start your 20 mark essay. And before then, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, follow my Instagram handle, Jamie the Geographer. This is where you can message me if you want any of the videos, the PowerPoints, I'm more than happy to send them. They won't cost you a thing. They're just for you as revisions. Comment any ideas that you would like to see on the channel, anything if you want to revise rivers, glaciers, nine mark questions, six marks questions. This is for GCC and A-level. It doesn't matter, I can do them all. I really enjoy doing them all. So here we go. So. A reminder, the six key criteria you need to have within your 20 mark essay to get into the top level four band is knowledge and understanding, your concepts and your processes, that's things like I said with physical, freeze for weathering, interception, through flow, with human that would be urbanisation, counter urbanisation, thingy urban, FDI, um, remittances, global governance, those kind of key terms that you've learned in your course. Then a temporal or a spatial scale aspect, maybe considering comparing different countries, the land size of a city to a local rural community, then assessing and analysing different factors that might need to be considered, evaluating those factors, so the plus and the negative, and a conclusion where after you've discussed everything, make your viewpoint clear to the examiner. What don't sit on the fence, make it clear, do you agree, do you disagree with the statement? So with that, we'll have a go. So for the essay question we've got is, for every problem caused by urbanisation, there is an effective solution. To what extent do you agree with this view? This is a 20 mark question. This came up in a previous paper. I got it from a revision guide, which is either way just as valid. Um, this would come up in paper two, section C for the urban unit, if that is the one that your school has chosen for you. And that is how this will work. So remember, a reminder of the structure, once again, an introduction, definitions of key terms or what you're going to be talking about, two to three main body paragraphs, and then a conclusion summarising your view from the introduction in the main paragraphs. And a reminder again, never sit on the fence. One more final look. These are the six key things you need to have. If what you've written in your essay doesn't fit any of those six boxes, you're not going to get any marks because that's not going to help you. These are what you need to have. And we'll show you with an essay that I produced before on how that would work. So if I share my screen with you now once again. Perfect. So, for every problem caused by urbanisation, there is an effective solution. To what extent do you agree with this view? So now, I've already written the essay. What I'm going to do is, using this code here, I'm going to highlight to you what counts as what, what would get you the mark, and I'll show you what the mark I've got at the end. And if you agree, that would be brilliant. If you don't agree, maybe challenge that. I want to see the different viewpoints. So we'll start with it. This looks longer than it is. It's not actually as long as it looks. I've just increased the spacing so you can read it a bit easier. So I'll zoom in. Hopefully we can all see that. Brilliant. So we'll start off with this. So introduction, as I said, urbanization is the increasing proportion of the population living in towns and cities. Perfect, key term, key definition, knowledge. Brilliant. With the current urban population being 55%, with this expecting to rise by 2050, that's again, knowledge. This suggests to be an ever-increasing issue with a range of strategies to combat the, combat the issues held at our global cities. So already we're starting to, let's have a look, that would be pink, we're already starting to analyse the situation because we're going, well with this it requires a range of strategies and we've already given a spatial context because we've said global city. So now we've already put intro here, we've given knowledge, analysis, and we've given spatial context. I won't write this in all of them, but that's just to give you an idea of what we've already just done. For the next bit, first main body paragraph straight into it. From one perspective, so there you go, evaluating already. You've already just evaluated that idea from one perspective. 
urban issues are becoming increasingly important to manage within HIC urban areas. So already we're starting to contrast because we've only considered HICs at this point. An example is the city of Birmingham, located within the West Midlands in England, holding a current population of 1.1 million. There we go, knowledge again. So we're gonna give that some yellow. One of the greatest problems, so already, you could argue I've just ranked there because I've just gone, one of the greatest problems is air pollution. This is, and then look, we're also giving key terms and processes because we're talking industrial city, modernized city. So earlier on in the unit, you should have studied about postmodernism, industrialized cities, African cities, all those different types. One, Birmingham is considered an industrial or a modern city. We've not moved towards that postmodernism that you've got in some countries such as Vancouver, um, in Canada, those kind of ranges. But that's what I mean. This is due to the increased use of car privatisation, the influx of wealthier residents commuting into the suburb. So look, I've just analysed again. And then I've also just given key factual and knowledge using places. So Car Harborne, I was meant to say Kings Heath, must have been also corrected. And Northfield towards the central business district. So then I'm going to highlight that one in green because we've used, if you want to guess, that would be key terms, the CBD, the suburbs. Then we'll bring it back to, once again, Snow Hill and the Bull Ring. Now, over 80% of NOx emissions come from the use of private cars through combustion of fossil fuels. So there we go. So that is one, a synoptic link that we have got just there. I don't know if I've got a key for that, so we'll just highlight it in grey. That's a synoptic link because combustion links back to the carbon unit for water and carbon. So in Birmingham, and has decreased by 11% in the last 10 years. So again, we're showing a lot of currently knowledge in application because we're using a lot of the analysis. So suggesting the issues are rising more and more over a temporal scale. So that bit would be knowledge. Then we've got suggesting the issues more and more, and then we'll add once again, temporal scale. So now we're getting some space and time. So you see how we've already got the first four bits covered. This has led to numerous social issues. So there we go, we're starting to evaluate there, in my opinion, because we've considered social issues, social, economic, environmental, that over 900 people die in Birmingham every year due to air pollution causing respiratory diseases, bronchitis and lung cancer, which has increased since by 50% since the last estimation in 2011. So there we go, knowledge again. And then do you want to have a guess? There we go, temporal scale once again. Showing this as devastating impact, so then we're going to go back to pink because we've had devastating, that's ranking it, you're assessing the level of it. And then this must be considered the base of how under 150 schools in Birmingham operate on a street where NOx levels exceed the legal limit, demonstrating management must be to maintain functional operations of a city. So arguably we've concluded throughout near the end there, so there we go, so we've got some conclusion at the end. That is something you need to have a conclusion at your end of your paragraph and at the very end of your essay. I don't think I've mentioned that before, so that's my mistake, but always conclude, evaluate, do this throughout. So we should have a look. I've already got all of the different colours included, along with, again, including spatial variation, 150 scores in Birmingham. Birmingham's not a small place. It's a scattering thing in the West Midlands. It's massive, and that's why you need to consider them. So look, there we go, we're going to move on to this, let's have a look, reminder, so have we, given knowledge and understanding, yes, key concepts and processes, so combustion, suburbs, CBD, temporal and spatial, definitely, analysis and assessment, definitely, conclusion, definitely, synoptic links, definitely, oh, we had a different colour for that, my mistake, it's very difficult to remember which um, keys we've got here. So that one was evaluation. Perfect. There we go. Now we're moving to all evaluations so on the second side of it, because now we've discussed all the negatives of air pollution in Birmingham. We're now moving towards the positive side of how we're combating air, urban air pollution. So we've seen this adopted through Birmingham City Council. So we're thinking of political roles within there. And we're also thinking of knowledge and place specific. So I'm going to highlight that as knowledge and understanding but then we'll also have some evaluation here. 
due to the fact that that's to combat the considering the other side. Example of this, the Birmingham Clean Air Zone that's take place in June 2020, where an egg pound will be met for anyone wishing to drive in this zone in the hopes of reducing car privatisation and bus services. I'm going to give all of that yellow, because again, that's all place knowledge that now runs on hybrid power of electricity. So you could argue this here is a synoptic link within the topic because we're thinking of sustainability, hybrid energy, hybrid power. Suggesting elements of sustainability will be an effective solution here. So we're going to give that red because ranking it, it's going to be effective. This shows monumental success as will reduce the level of particulate matter. So we're going to give that red because we're assessing it. And I'm going to give that green because we're referring to particulate matter. That's something you studied in the air pollution unit. And then generated by combustion, 80% from cars. So that is all your context, your key concepts. But also I'm going to give that bit here by combustion, once again, a synoptic link to carbon. Meaning this will improve the area of Birmingham from a socio-environmental perspective. So good, we begin to evaluate and analyse. So if you're right there, evaluation and analysis. Why is that both something we might be thinking? Well, that's because we evaluate it because we've looked at the goods aspects of how we're reducing the urban air pollution, but also how these methods will lead on to other things. So yes, we're reducing air pollution, that's good. Um, less fuel being burnt, less environmental degradation, but it's going to have a socio-economic benefit as well. So that's why we've considered and analysed what else it could lead to. This can be seen from one of the most effective solutions due to example, a national scale. So national again, so we're thinking, right, spatial scale. This has been incorporated in the world city. Oh, so we're going to have another key term used, world cities. So that's when you looked at the types of cities very early on, if you studied urban. If not, this is, might be alien to you, but just take the word for it. Having a population of 11 million people. So now we're talking, you know, mega city wise as well. That's a lot. It's near 10, that's over 10 times the size of Birmingham. So it shows that it can be implemented. So if we change and highlight that to yellow, charging £11 to enter and has reduced congestion by 30%, suggesting there to be benefits in the long term since its installation. So I would go and highlight that because it's the long term. They're thinking of concluding how is it going to go into the long term and also that's considering the temporal aspect of the scenario as well. However, so we're having a bit of an evaluative point again, this has been set back until later in 2020 due to a lack of effective structure and there's been protest around it as well because it's going to be near the Bullring area for those of you who live near Birmingham. That's that there's a lot of protest people who drive in to get to work, showing political issues. It will have that as part of the evaluative point. So can we see here, once again, range of different colours, which shows a range of different things we've considered. However, immediately, evaluative. While there shows to be increasing environmental issues in urban areas, so now we've considered evaluative environmental, the issue of economic inequality shows to be a more pressing issue in LIC and NEE cities. So key term, LIC, NEE, and then economic inequality. That's a key term you would know from global systems of government. So you could argue that is also a synoptic link again, but also from your key terms and processes, because you need to know the key term of economic inequality, the deprivation, the disparity in wealth between communities. So an example of this is Mumbai, Bombay in India, holding a population of 21 million. I believe it's a lot higher than when I wrote this essay. Um, and it's ever increasing due to rural to urban migration that has tracks over a thousand people per day. So most of that is knowledge because that's stuff I've learned, my flashcards, my revision, which is key in the 20 mile, but also rural to urban migration key term, key concept, key process, the movement of people towards cities due to pull factors. There we go. So one of the greatest issues they face in Mumbai is the lack of economic opportunities that living in a city is suggested to bring. So right there we go. One of the greatest issues, ranking. This can be seen by the fact of how 80% of the population live on less than $2 a day. And the lack of opportunities of education shown by 60% of the population being unable to read or write. So there we go, that's key knowledge. And then if we read on from the following that, 
meaning they will struggle to access jobs within the formal sector of Mumbai and the economy. That's analysis. Do you see what I mean? So what's your knowledge saying? So they've got no money, they've got no jobs, they've got no um, education. How are they going to access this? I mean, they can't. And that you're seeing that analysis, that chain of events, what's going to happen. So this issue can be exceeded to extended further to the development of squatter settlements um, on marginal land. If you haven't heard of Turner's model, I'm going to try and do a video on that later, but that's another key concept. Turner's model focuses on the idea of the growth of slums and squatter settlements and we compare it to the Rio favelas, but um, just at the end of the day, it's a key concept. As many cannot afford the high rent prices. So we're further analysing, again, we've given further assessment and ranking. And then we'll go back to it, a lot of highlighting. The Antilla household, which costs two billion to build for a 27 storey house for one family. That just shows you the spatial context of disparity in wealth when you've got a residency of Mumbai squatter settlements that have got over a million people and a 27 storey house for one family. This family is about only five people, I believe, when I wrote the essay. So that just shows you the contrast in wealth that leads to the contrast in economic and social disparity. Oh, look, I was ahead of the game. An example would be the Daravi slum in Mumbai, which has a population of over one million, yep, and has created various social issues. So if we go back, created various social issues, that's also evaluation. E.g. the lack of adequate sanitation and healthcare. This can be seen by the number of people diagnosed with disease, easy, typhoid and cholera, showing there's a lack of medical care available in contrast to HIC urban cities. So here we go. So it's showing, so we've concluded there because we've said what we believe that means. And in between, we've got once again, a lot of lovely yellow. That's a lot of knowledge. So can you see here, we've had less so of the spatial scale in here, but we've still got evaluative points considering the environmental issue we've been given synoptic links for economic inequality global governance um key processes of rural to urban migration lic's NEs. these are the basics like i said in the last video that's all you need to do and then finally your conclusion your short paragraph end of your sentence what do you believe and don't sit on the fence so overall the evidence suggests that every urban problem has an equal solution perfect this can be seen by the adaptation of air pollutions in HIC to reduce the level of particulate matter. Perfect. Analysis, what have we said? However, so we're now going back to evaluating. Economic and social depravity shows to be a greater issue for LIC, suggesting a contrast in urban issues. So we've evaluated because I never discussed anything to do with environmental issues in Mumbai. There probably are, but in my essay, they don't know that. That's what I've discussed. So in a global and spatial context, we're bringing it back. So globally, spatially, issues in urban areas are actually quite different. In the UK, the West Midlands, we're having a lot of issues on environmental change, the need for the changing of brownfield to greenfield sites, the level of um, parklands that need to be increased, the issues with climate change. Whereas developing countries, they're not focusing on that. They need... Um, an economic structure to be formed a good basis that is what's going to be key to allowing them to focus on the next level up so suggesting that environmental issues cannot be challenged until a structure is formed and maintained so we're going to be putting that as analysis in urban issues at a global and spatial context environmental issues cannot be challenged until an economic structure is formed and maintained that is it I know that probably sounds a bit longer for maybe some people, but this is all it is. When obviously I've typed this out, but when you write it, you'll obviously write less, that's understandable, but this is the basis. I've given my evidence from back with all my knowledge. I've backed it up and I've analyzed it. I've given key concepts and processes. And then I've also made a suggestion at the end. So I've made a link using all my ideas uh, that was not something I had in the essay before. I brought in a small new idea, like I mentioned in my last video, where urban issues, they actually vary spatially and they will change over time because we find new ways to manage it. That is all it was. So in the end, if you're wondering what this marked was, I've just looked back at it while discussing it. This, I received 19 out of 24.
and this took me about 25 minutes to write because I wrote it during my exam and I just typed it back out when they gave it back to me. This is all it will. That will get you into the level four band, like I said, because you've just had to fill in and filled in through this criteria, your knowledge, my understanding. So $2 a day in Mumbai, um, the Antilla household, Birmingham air pollution strategy. These are things that you know. If it's a city, if you live in a city, use that. They've not said you have to use one unless it's in the question. They didn't for this. Then you've got key concepts and processes. So suburbanization, counter-urbanization, turn is model, CBD, a temporal and spatial scale. Then you've got some analysis and your assessment like we did. We said devastational. Economic is worse in, H, um, in LICs than the E's, whereas environmental is worse in HICs. Then I've evaluated, so I've gone. Well, yes, we've got these issues for air pollution in Birmingham, but we're finding ways to manage it with the clean air zone. London's extended this further. Then we've also got a conclusion at the most the majority of the sentences where we've gone, yep, this is the thing that we've had. That's the end of it. Then synoptic links. So I linked a lot of it, as you'll notice, because I focus on air pollution, back to carbon cycle, back to combustion. That is the main bits that you'll have. Find a link. It's helpful if you have a topic you like or you have some links prepared before you go into the exam. You can work them into your essay. That will help a lot more. If you want to have an essay or um, a video on synoptic links, leave it in the comments. I will do one now. I'm planning on doing one, I think. And that is all it is. Brilliant. So that is all there is, guys. I know it was a bit of a long-winded one. I can just send you the essay like I did if you wish, and that will get you into the top band for AQA, A-level geography. And I hope you all enjoy it. I'm planning on doing nine markers for GCSE soon, and that will hopefully work as well. So just anything you want, please give a like, comment, subscribe. Absolutely. Thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.